Okay, this um, tutorial video is looking at Arab operational planning. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because this is important right at the start of the game. You've got to commit your operational points to do anything for the Arabs. That's because they had only a limited sort of uh, middle echelon staff. So... Uh, they, they weren't totally flexible in what sort of operations they could do. Now, your operational points are recorded on the sort of tracks down the side here. Syria starts with five operational points, and Egypt starts with, um, just let me check, yep, 16 operational points. Now, the operational points are needed to release your reserves. So if you look on the board, they're like these um, little counters here, which have a, a designation that's either a brigade or a division or something, and then you've got your location, which is your hex number. Now, you can spend operational points, but Syrian and Egyptian totals are totally separate, right? You can't, you can't exchange them or anything like that. Um, you can expand them and you can accumulate more. If you look on the tracks, you'll see that for each day you can get more coming in. Now, there is an option to make that variable because obviously the Israeli player can study these tracks and have a clue about what your capability is going to be from any turn to another. I, I am not sure about doing this variable thing, but I'm going to um, I'm going to bear it in mind. Now, when you come to expending your points, you need to spend. You can spend two uh, operational planning points to release an armoured division which I'm going to do here for the Syrians and then you're going to release uh, you spend one to release your infantry divisions these ones here and then you can spend uh, one more or one to release two of your brigades so I'm spending a total of five for the Syrians two on the armoured division uh, Two more on the infantry divisions and find my fifth point I'm expending on the uh, brigades. Now once you've decided what, that you've released these, you turn your counters over and then on the Golan Heights you've got a place, you place all your units for that um, released unit. I say all the units or all the uh, subordinate units to that release unit within four hexes of the released hex. So I've actually done that for these couple of brigades, but at the moment I've left the stacks uh, for the big divisions. I'll sort that out in a minute. The difference is because there's a scale difference on the uh, maps when you release from the Egyptians, which I haven't done any of at the moment, you have to place it within two hexes, all, all the units released within two hexes of the, the released portion. So I'm releasing this pink one here, so they'd all have to go in in the radius of two around there. Okay, now other things to remember about operational points, you need uh, you, you don't have to ex spend all the operational points that you've got uh, on that particular go. So you can, as I say, you can store them up. Another thing to remember with the Arabs, um, well, the Egyptians, they need to spend one operational point to place their divisional bridges, which are these ones here. I say the divisional, they're almost like a strategic HQ uh, bridging units. And they're important to get across the canal. Another thing uh, that you can expend operational points on is to move your HQs. 
So you can expend one operational point and then you can move all your HQs one hex. Now that's important when you, you're extending your uh, command and control uh, radius when, you, when you're advancing. So you, you want to keep your HQs up with your units to make sure that they're in command. Uh, we'll cover that in a separate video. Um, slightly different but very related thing to note is that certain reserves are automatically released and that's if the uh, Israelis cross the canal into uh, Egyptian Africa or whether the Israelis cross the anti-tank ditch which is this thing here into Syrian territory that will release all your reserves. You can also pay operational report, uh, points to release units out of these reserve holding boxes. Um, no, I might need to check that. Okay, it's slightly different from what I thought. Any Egyptian unit in these reserve boxes can be automatically released the moment the Israelis cross the canal but for the um, Syrians it's slightly different these reserves on the Syrian tracks are really allied tracks allied uh, units uh, Jordanian Iraqi uh, Palestinian Stuff like that so that they don't work the same way but what does happen if you cross the anti-tank ditch all these reserves here currently with their markers on the border are automatically released <laughs>